Logan Paul is suing me for CryptoZoo only a year after he thanked me for it. Rather than pay back his victims fully, Logan would rather publicly humiliate himself in court by accusing me of defaming him. He's hired five lawyers to sue me, which he hopes will stop me from exposing him again. You see, only hours before this lawsuit was filed, I had reached out to Logan Paul about a new investigation into one of his companies, which has just been accused by the Canadian government of being a multi-layered fraud in Canada. I obviously had questions, but before I was able to get answers, Logan's team of lawyers showed up to silence me. We're gonna talk about that. We're also gonna go through this lawsuit. I'm gonna tell you how to support us if you want, because while I didn't think I'd need help, I was wrong. But before we get to my mistake, let's start with Logan's. This lawsuit is not about Logan Paul getting defamed. Instead, this is about him trying to dodge accountability, victims, and blame anyone but himself for his problems, especially me. This lawsuit says Logan Paul wants to hold me accountable for my actions. But what actions are those holding him accountable? It's ironic because his lawyers claim Logan has learned to believe in the importance of accountability. But accountability for who? Currently, Logan is fighting the victims of CryptoZoo in court, and now he's fighting the journalist who exposed him in the first place. Personally, I believe Logan has learned nothing from this except how to silence people with the law. But I won't be silenced because Logan's lawsuit makes no sense. We're gonna go through it because from the beginning, there's problems. Logan's five lawyers tried to discredit me as a journalist. They paint me as someone who wanted money. They say I had a false and malicious narrative. But you know who doesn't believe that? You know who secretly praises me behind the scenes? This journalist, YouTuber, crypto uncoverer guy named CoffeeZilla, who's incredible, by the way. A very thorough, um, good-hearted, smart guy did a deep dive into this project that I attempted to make called CryptoZoo. That's right, it's Logan Paul. He's the biggest enemy of Logan Paul's defamation case. Who knew? Because defamation requires actual malice and a reckless disregard for the truth. But he just admitted on camera that I am thorough and good hearted. Maybe that's why he wanted to remove that video from the internet, according to the YouTuber who released it. The only issue that was ever communicated was remove this crypto stuff, remove this crypto zoo stuff. If crypto zoo is in there, if CoffeeZilla is in there, I'm not going to promote it. Yeah. Remove that CryptoZoo stuff, that CoffeeZilla stuff. Doesn't look good when you compliment the guy you're trying to sue. Maybe that's why Logan isn't even suing me for my original investigation at all. Despite most of this lawsuit being a ridiculous fanfic about how I took Logan out of context, that Logan was a victim, that I withheld text messages, Logan isn't suing me for any of the original investigation though, because he knows he can't. Instead, at the end of the lawsuit, we find what my defamation really is. I'm being sued for two videos and one tweet where I advocated for refunds for the victims. Yes, you heard me right. Logan Paul sued me after I tried to get his fans, the CryptoZoo investors, a full refund. Remember, there are two parts to CryptoZoo, the NFTs and the zoo tokens, and Logan chose only to refund the NFTs, which is a minority of the losses, and I had a major problem with that. I told Logan this, I've stated over and over my opinion, that it is disappointing for someone as rich as Logan to not make things fully right, and instead only pay back a small part of the losses while fighting the rest of the victims in court. And it's those videos and tweet where I ask for refunds, which I'm being sued for. The first video in question is about Logan Paul not paying out refunds for six months. The second video was about Logan's partial refund, having a clause to make sure you couldn't sue him for the rest of your refund. And the tweet, I simply said, Logan's the type of guy to thank you for exposing a scam and block you when you remind him to pay up. I mean, yeah, now he's the type of guy to then sue you. Now, I'm sure Logan doesn't like it when I say things like Logan's victims or Logan's scam, but I have a question. If they're not Logan's victims, Whose victims are they? Even Logan admits they are victims. He told me via text, just thought we had the same goal of helping victims instead of a divisive social media war. So he agrees people have been wronged by his game. You know, the thing that he said will earn you money. It's a really fun game that makes you money. 
So how are these not Logan's victims? He, of course, would say it's his business partner's fault. But remember, Jake and Eddie have been out of the picture for years. And yet, CryptoZoo hasn't been released, despite Logan constantly promising it and, of course, also threatening to sue me. We're going to handle this ourselves while we continue to build CryptoZoo, and I'll see you in court. By the time this comes out, it'll be done. The game's going to be made. You're going to have the opportunity to get your money back if you want, if you don't want to play the game. And I'm going to take care of the people who made me look like it, it, this was a scam perpetrated by me. Right. Logan wants to sue me and release a finished CryptoZoo game, but he's only done one of those. Since Logan can't blame his partners, Jake and Eddie, for this because they've been out of the picture, do you think he'll take accountability for not launching CryptoZoo? No. This time, he blames the government. He says releasing CryptoZoo has too many regulatory hurdles. Maybe they should have thought of that before multi-millions of dollars of zoo tokens and eggs were sold. And now Logan would rather blame the government than take accountability. Or if you let him keep talking, Logan might rant about internet reporters having too much responsibility. These internet journalists, internet investigative reporters have way too much responsibility on their hands that is being mismanaged and wielded in a really inappropriate way. It's honestly funny to watch this guy whine about his problems, which you can barely hear over what sounds like a private jet. Which brings me to another problem Logan has. Part of any defamation case is damages and proving someone has harmed your reputation. But isn't Logan richer than ever with Prime? And did he have a reputation to harm? His lawsuit shows comments calling Logan a scammer, possibly to suggest he's been hurt by my videos. But you have to have a reputation to lose one. And by the time of my reporting in question, Logan Paul was already accused of participating in multiple crypto pump and dump schemes. That article does not reference my work. So Logan had already had a reputation as a scammer before my investigation, at least if you believe their allegations. So this lawsuit from beginning to end is groundless, meritless, frivolous. And Logan knows that because behind the scenes in clips, he didn't want to get out. He's saying I'm thorough and good hearted. But in public, he wants to sue me, silence me, and cost me money because that's the one department where we both know he's got me beat. We might have facts. We might even have evidence. But he's got all the money and the lawyers.